Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Dean. That was so, so sweet. This is my first time of attending an HRC event, and I am so blown away by the amount of love and compassion and camaraderie in this group. It's such a beautiful thing to see. Um, I'm Jeffrey. I'm an actor. I'm a feminist. I'm a humanitarian. I'm an ally of transgender men and women, and I am a gay man. <laughs> Thank you. I feel tremendously blessed to have been asked to be here tonight to speak with all of you, a group of people who I consider to be some of the most inspiring and courageous human beings in our community. It makes me ask the question of myself, what have I done that could be interpreted as inspirational? I'm a dreamer. I always have been a dreamer. Since my earliest years growing up as a young mixed race child in a heavily patriarchal, predominantly Caucasian environment, I often escaped into daydreaming and imagination to avoid the harsh reality I was facing every day. Unbeknownst to me, it was through this very act of fine tuning my imagination that I manifested the world around me, which I find myself living in today. I trained myself in the art of dreaming out loud, and the results are undeniable. Albert Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. I was adopted as an infant and raised by a beautiful, loving family in a small farm town of less than 2,000 people in Alberta, Canada. Needless to say, I didn't have anyone <laughs> I didn't have anyone around me who I could look up to and see as a reflection of myself. No one looked like me, or talked like me, or walked like me, or moved like me, or grooved like me. While the other kids were all playing hockey and video games, and it's like ridiculously cliche that the kids were playing hockey, but that's what Canadians do. Um, I, I wanted to put on performances and dance and sing for my family, and as long as I can remember, my family would say with laughter in their voices, we are gonna send you to Hollywood. And I didn't know what or where Hollywood was, or even if it was a real place, but I figured if they thought that I belonged there, then there must be more people that were just like me, that walked like me, and talked like me, and moved like me, and grooved like me. It was a sad reality when I would turn on the television and tune my frequency into this land of Hollywood, and I never saw anyone who was like me. My earliest archetypes were females in television and film, the most notable to me being Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> Yes, Buffy. I am such a nerd. Um, now, although Buffy was not male or, or gay or of color, I saw myself reflected in her. She was an underdog who tapped into her authentic potential and helped to make the world a better place. She became my Shiro. I knew... <laughs> I knew that I was never gonna grow up to be a vampire slayer, but I also knew at the core, at my core, that I would someday work with the type of people who brought this project into fruition. I rapidly devoured episode after episode, and after the end of each week, I would see the credits rolling on the, on the screen, and I would see the name Marty Noxon under the title Executive Producer, and I would point at the screen and I would say out loud, I am going to work with you one day and I dreamed that I would someday portray an authentic representation of a gay person of color in television and film. I had no examples of it, so it became my mission to become it myself. A prayer that I have recited to myself on a daily basis for many years now is this. Use me, God, or universe, or Gaia, or Buddha, or whatever. Use me, universe. Show me how to take who I am who I want to be and what I can do and use it for a purpose greater than myself. <laughs> I believe that this has always been my life's intention even before I had these specific words to express it. Years went by and I was traveling the world as a model later in my later teens and early 20s, which was in itself a product of dreaming out loud. I kept saying time and time again, uh, I want to be tr paid to travel the world and get out of this little crap town that I was living in. Um, I never thought that I would or could be a model specifically, it just happened to fall in line with my intentions. At 21 years old, I began working as an actor in television and film. I was sitting at a restaurant in downtown Vancouver when a director named Ron Oliver approached me and asked me to read for his new film the following day. It was my first audition, I booked the role, and was given the priceless opportunity to play a thoughtful, realistic portrayal of a black gay man in a film called Shock to the System. 
I will always remember the words that Ron said to me in our final day of shooting as he pulled me aside, put his hands square on my shoulders, looked me in the eyes, and said, there is a void in this industry, and you are here to fill it. Never compromise your integrity. As, as the months and next few years went by, I found myself working as an actor in television and film. Um, I was mostly working on sci-fi series and movies of the week where I was playing straight characters in storylines that I really wasn't that passionate about. I found myself living in a state of, of emotional turmoil because I had lost the plot. I was compromising my integrity. I was not being used for a higher purpose. And the reason that I could gauge that was because I could feel that my personality was not being aligned with my soul's calling. Margaret Mead famously said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. All around me, I was beginning to see my peers and friends bloom and come into themselves. Jussie Smollett, Janet Mock, B. Scott, a new generation of heroes and sheroes that looked like me and talked like me and walked like me and moved like me and grooved like me. And their lights were shining so brightly and so authentically, my soul was reignited by their visibility. It was a glimpse of the Hollywood that I saw as a child, but that I never saw as a child, but so desperately yearned to see. I could feel change coming, and I knew that I had to be a part of it. If I could have even a small hand in helping a young LGBT soul know that there is no shame in who they are, that they were made just right, that they are not alone, and that they are loved, then I would be in alignment with what I have strived for my entire life and my entire career, to be a positive representation, to have an impact, and to be an ally for LGBT youth and for people like me. All of us in this room have the capacity and the capability to change the world or to at least change the life of someone who is living in this world. After many discussions with my team about the direction I wanted to take my life and my career, I trusted that I now had a clear intention, a path could be laid out before me. In September of 2013, almost two years ago to this day, I received a script for a pilot um, for a new show called Unreal. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> the critics love it. You guys will catch on. Uh, the show was smart and dark and edgy and interesting, and it was created by Marty Noxon, the same Marty Noxon I would point to on the screen every day after watching Buffy the Vampire and Slayer and say, I am going to work with you one day. The character of Jay was a charismatic but manipulative womanizer and a producer on a reality show. He was another straight character, however, I loved the project so much that I found a way to connect to him. I auditioned, I booked the role, I shot the pilot, and several months later, I got a call from Marty Noxon at my home informing me that the show had been picked up, that I would be returning as a series regular, and that the writers wanted to remodel the character of Jay to reflect more of who I am as Jeffrey Boyer Chapman. <laughs> I, said, I said, great, what does that mean? And she said, well, we want to write him as a gay man. I said, dream come true. <laughs> People have asked me for years. People have asked me for years, aren't you afraid of being typecast as only playing gay characters? And I've never understood that question. In fact, it's specifically what I've strived for my entire life, to be in a position where I could finally lend my voice and speak up for a community of people who I feel in many ways have been deeply mis- or underrepresented. To be the gay face of normalcy in the land of Hollywood. <laughs> The story of my journey may be inspiring to some of how I harness the power of dreaming out loud, using imagination and intention to get to where I am. But what's next? What now? How do I continue to live an authentic, inspirational life now that I am in this position and have been given a platform to speak my truth? By using my voice, by being visible as an out gay actor, by standing proud and being a source of strength to LGBT youth and to help marginalize communities of people who are still battling for equality and recognition. The transgender rights movement is the civil rights movement of this time. They are gaining more visibility in Hollywood. They are gaining more visibility in Hollywood with each passing day, but like any culture founded from oppression, they need allies to stand tall beside them and to shelter them under the same umbrella of love that we in the gay community have been afforded in recent years. As I was writing these words, 
I was sitting on the balcony of my home in Los Angeles when I looked up and saw sitting on top of the Southern California hills the infamous Hollywood sign. I didn't know what Hollywood was when I was a kid, and I'm still not entirely sure what I, I know what it is today. <laughs> but I'm using my imagination, and I'm dreaming out loud, and I have a vision of what I would like it to be and what I believe in the depths of my soul that it can be. We must let our voices be heard. Let our stories be known. We must lift each other up and support one another. We must support LGBT filmmakers and writers and directors and producers and actors. There are endless stories to be told and we are the ones to do it. If I can have this opportunity to represent our community through the act of visibility, then I believe that millions of other LGBT people can also be shown how to take who they are, who they are meant to be, and what they can do and use it for a purpose greater than ourselves. Thank you, HRC. Thank you all. I love you. Good night. Thank you.